This has been a rare winter for me because for the first time in 10 or 12 years, two of the college basketball teams I follow and root for are doing well. University of Arkansas, where I attended, has been in the doldrums since they won the national title in the mid 90s. But today they are ranked 12th in the nation and they're the hottest team in the Southeast Conference. Likewise, the University of Iowa, near where I lived for 14 years, has climbed back up into the number five ranking. Arkansas has a relatively new coach, a great defense and an exciting offense. Iowa, which has been slowly rebuilding, has the nation's leading scorer and likely player of the year, Luca Garza, who went to the Murray School in DC. It has been a long time since I've watched college basketball until the final four in late March or early April, but this year I've been attracted to the game because I have been rooting for the winner. Two of them, in fact. There's something about us that loves a winner. Some of our favorite biblical stories are the people of Israel leaving Egyptian chariots mired in the mud as they break through the Red Sea for freedom. Joshua taking the city of Jericho with the sound of the trumpet blowing until the walls come tumbling down. And David killing the giant Goliath with a sling and a stone. We love winners. We love victory. We love triumph. But sometimes victory is short-lived. After Israel was freed from slavery, they wandered in the wilderness for 400 years. The people of Israel did indeed take Jericho, but what followed was the period of the judges, in which they were largely unfaithful. David slew Goliath and went on to far greater triumphs, but it was the loss of his kingdom and the splitting of his family after his deed against Bathsheba and her husband Uriah that he found his true humanity. As he prayed, the classic Lenten psalm attributed to him, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. We are aware this season that in many ways, Jesus was not your conventional winner. He did show great heroism as he set his face to Jerusalem. He did say, I lay down my life of my own accord. No one takes it from me. He did say from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But his victory came in death in the cross and resurrection, where he gave up his life that we might have newness of life, where he died a difficult and even shameful death that we might live. His victory, like his love, was an emptying of himself, a taking on the form of a slave, a being obedient unto death, even death on a cross. One of my teams may win the national championship about a month from now, but likely not. Likely they will lose at some point, probably several games away from the title game. But whoever wins, the victory will be short-lived. As next season this time will likely bring a new team that emerges on top. The newness of life Christ brings to us through his birth, death, and resurrection can be exciting. It is exciting. It's as exciting as your team winning a championship, but there's one difference. It lasts a long time, forever, through all the seasons of the year, through all the seasons of our lives. Amen.